Hello and welcome to Belgian Diacast Restorations. My name is Johan and today we're tackling another classic Lesney Matchbox car. This is the number 64B, a 157 scale MG1100 produced between 1966 and 1970. This regular wheels version was produced up to 1969. In 1970 Matchbox briefly produced this model in a metallic blue version in its super fast range. I like this little casting with the driver in the front and the dog on the rear seat looking out of the window. The MG on my bark bench has been on quite some adventures. The paint has flaked and the windows, bottom plate and interior are covered in mud. The dark spot on the roof was an early attempt by me to see if I could find matching paint. In the end I found a color that's pretty close, so let's see if we can send this car back in time to the date it was given to its first little owner. This model is held by only one rivet in the front and a clip in the back. I drill out the rivet being careful not to make the hole too big. After several attempts the bottom plate finally gives way. We have the interior and the suspension and finally the very grimy window piece which is held by a rivet in the roof. I take the greatest care to remove just enough material for the window to come off. Drill too little and the window might break. Drill too much and you risk drilling a hole in the roof of the car. The wheels are dirty and the axles are rusty, but not in bad shape, so they can be reused. I remove the wheels by grinding away the axle ends. The wheels, interior, suspension and window piece depart for the ultrasonic cleaner. The metal body goes into the caustic soda to remove the paint. When it comes out after about half an hour the paint has loosened but there's still a lot left on the model. Matchbox paints are apparently very stubborn, which says a lot about the quality of these toys. Even after going over the model with a wire brush there are still some green parts that won't come off. I leave the model in Dettol disinfectant liquid. This is a great paint remover for plastics but also for metal parts. After an hour in Dettol the paint has softened enough to be brushed away with a wire brush. The result is a shiny bare metal casting.
Next it's time to drill a pilot hole in the rivet post using a 1.5mm drill. Then I tap a 2mm screw thread. Now that the paint is finally gone, I can also wire brush the muddy base plate that incorporates the front lights and grill. The detail on this casting is really good, even the numbers on the license plate are cast. I wipe the casting with isopropyl alcohol to remove any dirt or grease. Now we can start painting. I prime the body with Vallejo Grey Hobby Paint, which is a primer and matte coat in one. It gives a very good covering without losing any details. For the green color I use two coats of Motip Duplicolor RAL6024 Traffic Green. This is an automotive paint that gives a very nice scratch resistant coat. My ultrasonic cleaner is not very powerful and although most of the dirt is gone, I still have to clean the parts manually. I use warm water with dishwashing detergent and a toothbrush to get the last flecks of dirt from the parts. ultrasonic cleaner did a great job on the window piece, but there are still some tiny scuffs and scratches. I used 2000 grit sandpaper to even out the surface, then polish the window piece using plastic polishing compound. Afterwards, I cleaned with standard window cleaner and a soft cloth. The wheels are in very good shape, but are visibly worn. I used Tamiya X1 Black, which was thinned out with Tamiya Acrylic Thinner. This gives the wheels a very light glossy black coat, making them look like new again. The suspension is worn and bent upwards. I fix this off camera with a soldering heat gun with adjustable temperature. This allows me to heat the part just enough to bend it back down for the suspension to keep the wheels down. Before I can reassemble the car, I need to put the wheels back on. I clean the original axles using the wire brush.
Then I attach the wheels. The other end of the axle is flattened with my percussion drill. I don't put on too much pressure and keep the axle pressed against the bottom plate with my finger to avoid bending it. Sorry about my arm being in the way, I'll have to see if I can change my setup for next video. Now that the bottom plate is complete, we can start to put the car back together. First I attach the window piece which snaps in place over the rivet. Then I snap the suspension to the interior and drop it in place. Lastly comes the bottom plate with the wheels. Then it's a matter of screwing it back together. And that's another one finished. The paint is a bit lighter than before, but to me that's not a big deal, since Matchbox paints also tend to differ on various models. This MG looks like new again and the driver and his doggo can go on adventures once more. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tick that notification bell. More restorations are coming up, see you in the next video.